coming to my topic total endoscopic spine sign surgery and this is a broad spectrum topic which has been given and difficult to cover and the word total there is considerable misnomerism ambiguity heterogeneity associated with the use of the term endoscopy and that is what needs to be cleared before i can explain it more so this is an open surgery with the assistant surgeon standing here using spectacles and this is the surgeon who is operating with a microscope or a loop mounted onto his head which is throwing light as well as magnification and this is the surgery being conducted the same surgery being conducted by the surgeon and the assistant using an externally mounted microscope with an incision which helps give better view magnification is a microscopic surgery and a microscopic surgery with the help of a tube mounted through the skin these are tubular assisted surgeries so this reduces the footprints of surgery to minimal invasive spine surgeries making tissue dissections very very minimal and these are the advantages of the spine surgery mis microscope thus is loop is a actual microscope like this itself or an exoscope these are mounted outside the body same way endoscope is something wherein the channel itself has got the light and the camera mounted onto it and this is what it apparent it's like a pencil and some of the endoscopes will have an irrigation channel to continue and carry the water inside and take it out at the same time working instruments through the endoscopes can be carried out through this port and then that's this endoscope is called a working channel endoscope so coming now to is a microscope an endoscope no but is an endoscope a microscope yes so to clear all this ambiguity even the premier organized uh, or, uh, organization of our spine surgery has come out with a consensus paper for nomenclature of full endoscopic surgery or the working channel endoscopic sur surgery wherein they have defined as all surgeries which is conducted through a single channel uh, endoscope using irrigation channel as full endoscopic spine surgery and rest of the other surgeries they have labeled it as endoscope assisted surgeries so in this even our own indian arun banot and ramot lokhande they have contributed so that itself see, it shows the premier uh, uh, institutions uh, 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 plan to make regular term and avoid all the misnomerism so what we'll be talking about is transforaminal endoscopy interlaminal endoscopy which is full endoscopic spine surgery and at the same time unilateral biportal which is not full endoscopic surgery but we'll talk about it because for the sake of completion and because it is a popular procedure the ot setup will be like an any arthroscopic setup with the patient lying prone or patient lying lateral with the surgeon standing on the side of the surgery where he has to and the, on the opposite side there is the screen and the monitor which is there this is the image intensifier which helps us to localize the levels and the screens are mounted of the image intensifier on the opposite side with the anesthesia always there even if the procedure is done under local anesthesia regional anesthesia or a general anesthesia always the anesthetist has to be present so that is the most important thing which has to be taken in consideration the endoscopic transformal approach has got a scope which goes through the transforaminal region and uses these instruments of uh, a pen sizes and this is where it goes between the superior articular process and the exiting nerve root and this is called the cambens triangle and here is where the port where the endoscope is going this is not a midline incision but it has nearly 12 to 16 cm from the midline wherein the endoscope is going through a half cm incision and all work is done through the transforaminal approach it is not midline approach and the basic steps are reaching to the disc putting uh, an incision onto the annulus retrieving the fragments and having the neural decompression monitored clearly and there are two techniques for this one is inside out one is outside in for the inside out you go into the disc and then slowly come out for outside in you don't go into the disc but you are working outside in the epidural space by doing a foraminoplasty and this is how an outside in technique goes in where a rimmer goes to widen the cabin triangle the limitations are migrated disc prolapse and central disc prolapse concomitant lumbar stenosis is a problem to be handled with 
transformable endoscope the range of movement of the endoscope by transformable route is limited so these are the limitations and their complications commonly are retained disc fragments and in inadequate decompression post operative dysesthesia due to exiting nerve into injury is also a specific complication and all other complications due to a any spine surgery can occur with a transforaminal surgery also in interlaminar technique the endoscope is passed in the midline area of the spine with all indications of a microlumbar discectomy is possible with an interlaminar endoscope this is where the this is the place where a needle or a direct dilator uh, lands and you make an incision of say 5 mm to 10 mm depending upon what is what is the endoscope used either a thin endoscope or a thick endoscope which is also called a stenoscope then you dilate the space and with dilation of the space you reach to the laminar window and you can do the tissue clearance do the ligamentum flavum removal widen the space you see the disc fragment remove it you have the annular rent which can see and finally the decompressed nerve root is visible this is as equivalent to a microscopic discectomy but the complications specific to this is dural tears more frequently seen and a recurrent disc herniation due to more aggressive dissections which is done with a uh, thicker endoscope usually unilateral bipodal endoscopy wherein here this is a technique wherein there are two windows one incision is put here one incision is put here on the right side or the left side and here these two instruments one the endoscope is giving you the visualization but at the same time this working channel is giving you access with routine normal instruments for doing the procedure and the technical considerations are a bit difficult because for a left sided symptomatic patient you can stand on the left side of the patient and operate but for a right sided a right handed person will find it difficult to do on the right sided place so you need to repeatedly train and an ambidextrous person will be more comfortable to do this procedure so right side pathology is difficult to be handled by ub but at the same time a left side pathology becomes easy and this is where the endoscope is there which gives you vision and here is the working port which gives adequate mobility and range of movement that is the greatest advantage of it and it gives with the least radiation which is possible this the instruments also are relatively cheaper than other full endoscopic systems but again the complications are same to as that of the interlaminar approach like a recurrence or a dural injuries rest of the complications any spine surgery can occur with this also the limitations of full endoscopic spine surgery are steep learning curve the possible higher chances of complications especially for Be, uh, beginners and that's why the familiarity with the arthroscopic techniques have to be there this is an interlaminar window which is being used to remove the central stenosis at the same time this same scope can be used for removing removing the contralateral uh, over the top decompression to the opposite side you are going from one side and decompressing the opposite side also simply a smaller scope can again be reinserted to remove the foraminal stenosis by chopping off the superior articular process and a smaller scope can be used directly ventral to remove a disc fragment also which lies ventrally anterior to the neural tissue but this involves a retraction of the neural tissue this is to be remembered in interlaminar approaches transforaminal endoscopy reaches here goes further remove this fragment it can remove the part of the bone of the superior articular process easily with the ligament of phlegm and make space in the lateral recess also so this is possible the endoscope transforaminal being put and kept for a migrated disc prolapse see the reach of the endoscopic instrument which can remove epidurally a very big fragment also these are calcified disc disc prolapse with high chances of complications for posterior surgeries this are transforaminal approach which is taken bilaterally and you have decompressed this completely two endoscopes being put on one on left side one on right side and you are able to decompress the nervous neural tissue which is very coiled easily and confirmed during the procedure this is a navigation luxury which i have at my institute which will reduce the the uh, uh, radiation exposure to negligible publications recent of mine for glistus is also transformer endoscopy used for cauda equina syndrome it has been used for fusion it has been used but these all are possibilities because these are working in the hands of less number of surgeons as of now and it is still evolving and it is still not available to all surgeons or everybody has not got 
themselves trained to that level. Classic indications for a transforaminal endoscopy would be an extra foraminal disc prolapse and a paracentral disc prolapse at L45 and above. Recurrent disc, this is best because you are going through a virgin area and completely avoiding all the fibrosis and problems of dural tears which can occur with a posterior surgery. Disc IC is a special indication for transforaminal endoscopy, especially the earliest cases. So, interlaminar endoscopy is for lumbar disc herniation with a small endoscope. This possible very good procedure. Transferal endoscopy for lumbar disc herniation is absolutely the best procedure which can be done. For stenosis and fusion, it is evolving. It may reach to a evolved phase soon. Interlaminar stenoscopy with a bigger scope endoscope for stenosis and fusion is getting established slowly and good way. The unipotal bilateral endoscopy is again same indications as for an interlaminar but with more versatility and can be applied for a long uh, multi-level level also. These are the literatures which I use for making the presentations and uh, thank you Mini Ayapan for the opportunity to speak at this platform. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.